Oh, hello, friends. Hello, friends. The tiny, emaciated New Ladies Revolution here on the sofa to uh, give you a video that I told you I'd give you. I don't want to give anything away. I'll put it down here. Told you a video that I would uh, give you a few days ago. Uh, the dogs are barking upstairs. That's okay. Let's do that video now. Uh, I said I would do it, I think, I don't know, what's today? Friday? I think I said I, it would be coming Tuesday. Uh, and <clears throat> it, I just wasn't feeling good. You know, this, um, every video I'm not going to talk about the condition as it's been, as it's come to be known, the condition. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it every time. That's not why you, you tune in. You tune in for happy things. Uh, but the condition, uh, she's a beast. Uh, I'm being light and jovial about it now, but it has the ability to completely sink me into a pit of despair. As I have chronicled over and over again. Um, so, today's good... And I ate a lot. I make a lot of Puerto Rican rice, rice and beans. I've got, I've got the, the, you know, I'm lucky enough to have a, a Puerto Rican stepmom. 100%. None of this mixed stuff. 100% uh, Puerto Rican stepmom who taught me how to uh, make rice, rice and beans. And so when your esophagus is insinuating that you have an allergy to something, uh, you have to start changing your diet and eating uh, like the same thing every day. So I made a big pot of rice and, and there's chicken and um, I buy like that potted meat stuff, that sandwich spread stuff. I mean, that's probably not healthy, but I, I can eat it. <clears throat> because out of the blue, I'll just wake up and my, my throat will be swollen. The inside of my throat, the esophagus will be swollen and I can barely get liquid down. And then I wake up the next, and then that kills me, that, that I'm out for the day. I'm miserable, I'm depressed, I'm anxious. And then the next day I'll wake up and it's eased down a little bit. I'm like, if this is an allergy, you know, come on. So I, I don't know. I don't know. That's not why we're here. So when I promise you a video and I don't make it, it's because I'm having a bad day. And I have lost more weight. Um, good Lord. All right. We're going to do my five, my top five movies that I don't want to just do it a disservice by saying, uh, it's the, you know, the top five movies that uh, scream the 80s. In, in fact, hang on one second. I've got to, uh, I just realized that I, I made the wrong choice. Uh, I'll do six. How's that? Let me include this one. I'll do six. Uh, six. Movies that scream in the 80s. And what do I mean by that? Well, I think people watch movies all differently, you know. And um, I'm, not a, I'm not a movie, f a, a cinephile, as they say. Somebody who, who picks apart a movie and talks about, you know, big words like cinematography and things like that. I, I don't know what any of that stuff means. Um, so I, I'm, I would make a horrible movie critic. Because I don't know what, I, the only one thing I know that I'm critiquing is, did I like it? That's it. So everybody watches a movie differently. So when I say the top five, now six movies that, that just scream 80s, I'm talking about a movie that I watch that immediately transports me back to uh, this period of time, watching it as a kid, um, having it be popular at the time that I was a kid. Maybe it, maybe it like... Uh, you know, tag team with fast food, or maybe it had a snack, or maybe it had a drink, or whatever. Maybe it had action figures, obviously. Maybe it had a video game. So that's one judge, one way I'm judging these. The next for me is the, uh, the environment, the, 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 the atmosphere of the movie, the scenes. You know, I love some movies that are like, you know that the movie's taking place in the 80s. You know, I like the movie Wall Street. 
speak with Charlie Sheen and, and uh, I think the other Sheen. Is it? Is it Martin? Well, Martin Sheen's in it. Charlie Sheen and the other guy. Yeah, him. You know, Catherine Zeta-Jones' husband there. Anyway, Michael Douglas. That's not a fun movie. It's not a comedy, but, you know, and it, and it takes place in, in 80s downtown, right? In 80s apartments. Adult apartments. Cool. But I, I especially like movies that, uh, that have an 80s neighborhood, an 80s home, an 80s bedroom, an 80s school, you know, things like that. And, and there are definitely um, horror movies that I could have included in this. Well, maybe I won't tell you. Yeah, I won't tell you. I'll, I'll do an 80s. I'll do a, uh, my five 80s horror movies that just scream 80s. All right, let's do these. The one that I immediately thought of when I was going to do this, I didn't grab. I don't know why. Uh, so I had to get it off the VHS shelf. Uh, the Karate Kid on VHS, which is pretty awesome and I, that I have it and I love it and I'll watch it. And this is weird. This is like totally sealed all the way around. It's not sealed as in the store, but there's no like, there's no like bottom. I think you got to like rip it or something. I think this is a sealed copy, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, no, it isn't. There we go. Okay. Anyway, uh, The Karate Kid. Many, many, many reasons. Um, karate. Karate was massive in the 80s. Whether you took karate or not, you told someone that you took karate. Okay, I remember, and this is embarrassing, but I remember having uh, a fight, and I was uh, 10, right? So 86, and maybe nine, and I was, I was getting into a fight with, a, with just a kid, you know, in the, in the apartment complex or whatever, wherever we were, I don't know. And my sisters made fun of me after the fight and, and the fight ended with just me getting sat on i just remember this kid's big you know ass just like sitting on my chest and then we just stopped fighting but my sisters made fun of me because moments before the fight i went into a karate stance i didn't know karate but that's just what you did you know ah <laughs> uh, so karate you know <laughs> karate was huge in the 80s uh, and the, the high school, the, the putting stuff, you know, the golf, miniature golf arcade, uh, the styles, you know, even, even the apartment complex is like this beautiful eighties apartment that they move into in, uh, you know, when they move to, uh, Reseda or wherever, or yeah, Reseda, that, 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 that like up and down apartment complex with like, you go up the stairs to get to the, it's like almost like a motel. That screamed 80s. The station wagon that the mom drives screams 80s. Uh, and watching it in the 80s. I remember, and I told this story before, we watched it. We watched it as a family in my childhood home. Pre-divorce, ladies and gentlemen. One of my early memories of pre-divorce. The other early memory of pre-divorce was my father covering my eyes during risky business. Uh, but and I, why I was watching in the first place, I don't know. It's okay to watch the rest of the movie, but just cover your eyes during the 800 sex scenes. We watched the movie as a family. Uh, my sisters, just my one sister, I think my, my littlest, my youngest sister was like too young. And immediately after the movie, my sister and I start doing karate. And I give her, I give her a mean, you know, I don't know, thrust sabat kick or something. Right into the gut. Oh, she doubles over. I'm in trouble. You know, you guys can't watch movies. You can't even watch a movie without acting this way. Karate Kid. Uh, the next one, again, these are not going to, nothing is going to surprise you about these movies. In this one, it's all about the home. It's all about the neighborhood. It's all about, again, the clothing. There's a, a soap opera constantly going on in this movie. Uh, there's some Star Wars stuff in the kids' rooms. And it's got one of my favorite actors, Michael Keaton, Terry Garr, right? Martin Mull, the three kids, Mr. Mom. 
Mr. Mom Screams 80s. In fact, there was something in this movie that, that just goes unlooked, unnoticed. When, when he's making dinner for her, thinking that she's coming home, he throws... Oh, man, somebody's calling me. And if I don't cut it off, you're not going to be able to hear me. Get rid of that. Get off me. Get off. I can't even... There we go. He's waiting for her to... I, I hope you didn't miss any of that. When a call comes in, I think it mutes me. I don't know. But he's... Uh, Michael Keaton's making, movie, uh, making food for his wife, thinking that she's coming home. She ends up staying late at work. And, and at the time, Chinese food was, was blowing up in America. And he throws these Chinese noodles into a, into a wok and they go, and they like pop, pop up into, they're like rice noodles, right? Real thin rice noodles. He throws them in the pot and woof, they go like that right away. They, cook, they, like, they like hydrate right away. Uh, I loved that. I love that scene. There's actually a, uh, there's actually a, a little blooper in this movie when Terry Gar shoots Wait. Yeah, she shoots she shoots Michael Keaton. Oh no no. I think the girlfriend shoots Michael Keaton. Terry Gar walks in on it. I'm not sure. But at one point, Michael Keaton has his beer in his hand and he's shot, right? And he's and he's like fumbling around and he's mad about the shirt. And he like he he sits down real hard in the in the uh chair. And as he does that, his beer starts to foam up and over the bottle. So he just looks at it and takes a takes a swig of it. And Terry Gar is laughing the whole time. And they keep it in the movie. And it's such a beautiful scene. Go watch it now. Go watch it now. It's at the end of the movie. Uh, kind of. Kind of. It's a dream, obviously. You know, and then he puts himself in the soap opera. But yeah, he, he's got the beer. He's, you know, he's selling the, sh the shot real dramatically. He sits down and the force of, we've done this, the force of, the, of him sitting down in the chair uh, overflows the beer. And, and again, he just looks at it. Michael Keaton, he takes a drink, wipes his mouth, and Terry Gar's cracking up. I love it. I love Mr. Mom. Love it. Uh, the next one, man, oh man. For so long, I boycotted this movie because I thought it was too sad. And I didn't think I'd enjoy it, uh, a sad movie. Holy cow. But before we were going to Universal last year, you know, they got the E.T. ride. I wanted my kids to watch E.T. So I bought the 4K and we watched it. And I'm telling you the truth. It's the first time I've watched it since I was a kid. And I absolutely madly in love with it. I love it. Now, I love the movie, period. But again, the housing track in this movie that they live in, I think it's, maybe I'm wrong, it's, it's like the same one from Poltergeist, which might be a little spoiler as to what's on my horror list. But the housing track, right, where, where, where land developers would just take these random spots of land and just put 30 of the same exact looking houses in there. And, you know, kids would be riding their bikes. And in the background, there's nothing. There's nothing. There's just mountains. I love it. I love the housing track. Um, all the shots of the kids' rooms. All the stuffed animals. The Reese's Pieces. Drew Barrymore is just incredible. What a great kid, actress. So much about bike riding in this movie. You know, Big Brother... You know, picking on little brother. The opening scene when they're eating Pizza Hut, right? They're they're eating pizza at the table with their friends. Just the best. The best. Ah, screams the 80s. Uh, funny that a movie that isn't even set in the 80s for most of the movie is on my list. Because it has the 80s actor in it. Michael J. Fox. Michael J. Fox doing Family Ties and Back to the Future in our lives at the same time. Now, again, only a few, poor, a few moments of the movie are in the 80s. But this movie is so 80s iconic. It's so good, obviously. I'm not, I don't have to tell you that these movies are good. But, again, I go back to the house, the neighborhood... 
you know, Michael J. Fox waking up in his bedroom with a, uh, with the brown, you know, alarm clock going off in his ear. Huey Lewis all over the soundtrack. You know, he's got the monster truck. When I, uh, when I bought my truck, uh, I, I bought a, a brand new Dodge Ram 1500, um, in 2021. And when I texted, a, I, I texted a picture of it from the lot to my seven-year-old who was whatever, five at the time. And I said, you know, tell Finn, I just bought him a Dodge Ram because he loved trucks at the time. So I took this picture of the, of the truck and their mother texted me back and said, that looks like the truck from back to the future, right? You know, Michael J. Fox's truck. It's not. But as it was just sitting on the lot, like it was all by itself and it like it was a little higher up, big truck, big wheels. And it just it just reminded me of the truck that I bought, the truck in the movie. Um, the mall. I mean, come on. They're not even in the mall. They're just in the mall parking lot. And it's and it's awesome to see that, you know, to see them in the mall. I think J.C. Penney is in the background. How great. Ah, back to the future. Uh, the last one, there's another one that I picked, but it's only because I forgot um, Karate Kid. Uh, I guess I'll talk about it. The Goonies. The Goonies, okay, The Goonies is not necessarily about homes or even atmosphere so much, environment. It's about friends. Uh, they're the big Goonies house and that weird Goonie, you know, seaside neighborhood. I, I couldn't relate to that. But the friends, man. The friends, how how there was such a little crew, uh, the younger kids, then the older kids join in, the brother and the two girls. And honestly, I'm not going to say that this reminded me of childhood. It, it, I didn't I didn't have Goonies adventures, but in my neighborhood, I had friends my age, and we also would occasionally be accepted into the older kids group right? Just to play. You know, if the older kids were bored, and by older, I mean like 12, right? If the older kids were bored, they'd let us hang out and we'd, we would jump ramps with them or, you know, they'd, they'd join a kickball game or whatever. Most of the time they're off, you know, smoking somewhere behind the convenience store. But if they were bored, you know, they'd let us play. And uh, I just, I just, you know, again, it, it really reminds me of just I was always a one friend kind of guy. I wanted one friend and I, and I hated when they had other friends. <laughs> but so there's, you know, I didn't have a, a crew like this, but I did in this particular neighborhood, in my particular childhood neighborhood, there was like four kids my age. There was a girl that we all loved just because it was the only girl, you know, and then the older kids would get involved. Did I go on adventures like this? No, but this is something that you would do on a smaller scale, okay? It's a little bit extreme, but I don't know. I don't know. The Goonies, the friendships, uh, I love it. I love how the older kids are hanging out with the younger kids. I think these, I think these are getting me misty. Uh, the other one that I grabbed, but I don't really have a lot, Ghostbusters, yeah, sure. Um, like I said, I grabbed this by accident. I, I love it, and it's a great 80s movie. It's not included. Forget I said Ghostbusters. That's the top five movies uh, in this kind of genre that bring me back, that scream 80s, that there's there's nothing you can think about except the 80s and friendships and your house and your neighborhood uh, during uh, while you're watching these movies. I'll do a horror one. Uh, I think it's kind of obvious which ones will be on there, but I might do a horror one. Anyway, what are your five? And I want them to be different. They will be different. I'm sure that you're going to have some of these, but I love hearing about, like, you know, Wall Street. Wall Street is such an 80s adult movie. Risky Business is such an 80s adult movie. I love them. You know, some adult comedies that I, I didn't watch as a kid, but Scream 80s, like Easy Money with uh, Rodney Dangerfield. You know, there's, there's so many. I could do my top 10. Put your top five below and uh, we'll have some discussions. Whew, you know, I got to take advantage of these feeling good days. I've got so much energy 
I don't know if it's the steroids that I'm on. I don't know if it's the fact that I just ate for the first time in 36 hours, but I feel, I feel uh, energized today. Uh, so come down, make a video. Um, XOX on a new custom. We're going to take a look. It's along the same lines as the what I'm going to call the commemorative anniversary figures. All right, so get ready for that. That'll be tomorrow. Thanks for hanging out. I don't want to edit this, so you're just going to watch me get up in all of my 173 pounds and uh, say goodbye. Good night now.